Today I wanted to respond to one of Tessa's videos and talk about what it means to be a fan. Now I know that as I'm filming this, at least Matthew has posted a video where he talks about how he views being a fan. But I haven't yet had a chance to watch it, so I don't know how similar or dissimilar our views are going to be, but I am certainly curious to see. Now I believe I made a video once on the elitism of fandom. I haven't really had a chance to like comb through my videos and look for it, so I don't know if I actually did. Uh, if I didn't, I certainly meant to, but it also might have been on my blog that I had before this video, which now no longer exists because the Ning is gone. It's just a whole thing. But just in case I didn't, or you just don't feel like combing through all my videos, which I completely understand, I'm gonna go ahead and just give a brief description of what I would have talked about. What set this particular video, or at least idea, off was a post from a Buffy Confessions blog that I follow on Tumblr. In this anonymous post, this person said that because they grew up with the show, they're the only true fans of the show because no one else can know what it's like to be a fan since they didn't have to wait between episodes. This is stupid and elitist and just incredibly wrong. You are aware, dear anonymous poster, that this means that one can only be a fan of a show if they happen to be alive when it came out, right? To me, this is not what makes a fan. Now, it can certainly be one of the reasons that you might consider yourself a fan, but it's definitely not the only requirement. I didn't watch Buffy when it first came out, especially considering the fact that I was five when it started. But I've watched all seven seasons. So even though I didn't watch it when it first came out, and also even though I haven't read any of the official comics that came out, I still consider myself a fan of the show. Let's also go ahead and talk about Star Wars, since it was one of the things that Tessa talked about in her video. I do consider myself a fan of Star Wars, despite the fact that, personally, I've only seen the original trilogy once. I've also only seen uh, Star Wars 1 through 3 once, and I haven't watched The Clone Roars, or read any of the Extended Universe, or done anything else with any of the other supplementary material. Although I suppose I did watch Rogue One, which is technically considered supplementary material, I guess? I don't know, it's a little little confusing. But despite all of that, I still consider myself a fan. Two really interesting examples, at least for me on my end, are the games Stardew Valley and Five Nights at Freddy's. These are two games, well, one game and a series of games that I am fascinated by. All the thought that went into the FNAF game, starting with the very first one, is just really amazing to me. All the lore that you can kind of pick apart for these games is really interesting, and I thought that even back before I discovered game theory. And Stardew Valley is a great game. It has a really cutesy feel, but it discusses very important topics in an extraordinarily well manner. And it does it all without affecting its style. And I consider myself a fan of these games, but here's the thing. I will never actually play any of them. I'm not a big horror game person, and honestly I find that FNAF sometimes relies a little too much on jump scares, which I'm not a big fan of. Eh, fan. And I tried to play Stardew Valley once, and I just really couldn't get into it. It's just not my kind of game. But the ideas behind these games and the lore inside these games are all really interesting, and I do quite a lot of research into them, even though I haven't played them. So I think the idea of what makes a fan is a really complicated one, like almost deceptively so. But I think that I can boil my thoughts on fandom and what makes a fan into two ideas. One, if you're truly a fan of something, you shouldn't push people away from it. If you really enjoy something, be it a TV show, a movie, a game, what have you, you should want other people to enjoy it as well. Now that obviously doesn't mean you should talk about it 24-7, but it also means that you shouldn't put a stipulation on whether someone else is a fan, or a stipulation on how they should enjoy it or play it. I'm looking at you, Undertale fandom. And two, it all comes down to personal preference. Now, I acknowledge this may sound like a bit of a cop-out, but I honestly believe that it's true. If you consider yourself a fan of something, then you're a fan of it. Whether you've seen everything from the franchise or not, whether you know every bit of trivia or not, whether or not you actively play or watch whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You're a fan. In my mind, it becomes very dangerous to try to decide whether or not someone else is or is not a fan of something. And the only time that I personally will do that is with point one that I mentioned earlier. As far as I'm concerned, if it's something you enjoy and you consider yourself to be a fan of and you don't actively push other people away because they don't experience it in the exact same way that you do, 
you're a fan. But obviously these are just my thoughts, and I would certainly be interested in hearing what you have to say about it. I think looking into the idea of fans is fascinating, so I guess that means I'm technically a fan of fandoms? I don't know. Anywho, that's it for this video, so I will see all of you tomorrow.